It's Amanju. Welcome to Divergence SMP. When I built my base on this SMP, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It's a base under the water. I tore down an entire ocean monument and put my base in its place. But recently I uh, had an unexpected visit from Cat Beanie who left me with mushrooms. Not uncommon for me to get visits from the Wandering Trader, but to get visits from mushrooms? That's something else entirely. This floor of my base is the only thing that's above water, and it is the Guardian Farm. It's a very industrial area. I have dozens of tridents. It's really not good for an SMP, because if anybody else was to try to use it, they would have to pick up all of the tridents and re-throw them uh, so that they could make use of it. But it's also not a safe area to walk around because inevitably visitors to this end up picking up tridents accidentally. Regardless, I have these mushrooms here now and I want to do something with them and certainly get them out of my guardian farm. Mushrooms are a very unusual creature. They have some pretty interesting properties that makes them extremely useful. They are essentially a limitless source of food, but they're not a very portable source of food. But I think it would make a nice addition to my laboratory down here. I have one of each type of zombie, and I also have a wither skeleton and a blaze down here on display. I could add one brown mushroom and one red mushroom to this collection in my basement laboratory. I think this area would be a good spot to set up for them. Kind of torn grass or mycelium. I think I'm going to use grass. With a little bit of puzzle. Alright, I need to get them through the floor here. brown and one red. Oh! I was gonna get some wheat to tempt them with, but it didn't matter because they just went in the boat anyway. Alright, let's... Whoops! Oh shoot, I was afraid of that. I need to put the lead on the boat without putting the lead on the mushroom. Okay, you can get back in the boat now. Thank you. Now, let's see if I can do this. Drag that into here. Down the hole. And down this hole. Shove it down that hole. Whoops. I don't know if I can get it. There! I just briefly demonstrated it unintentionally, but I can get these mushrooms out of the boat without breaking it just by putting leads on them. They come right out. I think that's a bedrock exclusive feature to put leads on walls instead of just fences. No, no, dude, no. What are you doing? What? Why you gotta be like that? Get over here. There.
One cool thing about mushrooms that I want to demonstrate in my little display here is that you can use a wooden bowl on one and get a mushroom stew out of it. But brown mushrooms are special. Not only can I get mushroom stew from them, but I can also get suspicious stew. Let me go grab a flower, like say a dandelion. If I feed them a flower, before using the wooden bowl on them, then they'll produce suspicious stew, and the type of suspicious stew depends on what kind of flower I feed them. So, feed them a yellow flower. I believe that gives me suspicious stew that gives saturation. Yes, yeah, saturation. There's a total of nine different kinds of suspicious stew that I could get from the brown mushroom depending on which flowers I feed it first. So, I'm going to set up a little display here with all the different kinds of flowers that I can feed it and the different effects that that gives me. Use some more of these item frames that can't prank me with. You know, honestly, I did not have a lot of item frames because I don't have cows of any kind. At least I didn't until now. I do have a lot of leather now, though, because I made that piglin bartering setup in the last video. But until that time, I didn't have a lot of leather, so I didn't have easy access to item frames. So there's actually, there's nine effects, but there's 11 different flowers that can be used. So there's like a couple different flowers that you can use for some of the effects. I don't know if I have all of the flowers that I need, but let me check. Allium for fire resistance. Do I have Allium? Yes. That gives me suspicious stew that gives me fire resistance for four seconds. I have dandelions. Give me saturation for 0.35 seconds. Oxy Daisy gives me regeneration for eight seconds. Hmm, poppies, poppies. Well, I know where I can get poppies. Let me head down to my iron farm really quick. I have a few poppies. It's a byproduct of the iron farm. Poppies give me night vision. Five seconds. Some torch flowers here. Torch flowers also give night vision, so I don't need to do anything with those. Tulips. I have a variety of different kinds of tulips. Tulips give weakness. Nine seconds. And wither rose. I don't have a lot of wither roses, but probably more than most people have. Wither roses give the wither effect for eight seconds. So I'm missing Azure Bluette and Blue Orchids. Where can I find those? There's a couple possibilities I can think of. I think Cat Beanie would be a good bet. If anybody would have all the different varieties of flowers, it would be her. We'll go ahead and check her shop at World Spawn. See if she's got any flowers there. I think she was selling dyes and or flowers. Wait a minute. What flower is that? Azure Blunt, all right. I thought that was the right kind, okay. That just leaves blue orchids. Hmm, where can I find, let me check Cat Beanie's shop. Maybe she has blue orchids. Yeah, there was a shop selling dye, I know there was, right here. This shop. Because it's selling dye, and what I need is flowers, not dye. Well... Ah, okay, I found it. Oh, man. I don't know if I'll ever find my way back. I may not bother to try and get back through the nether.
Ah! That's why I slept, because I know her base is not well spawn-proof. It's not lit up. It's so big, it's hard to light everything up. And inevitably, we get monsters spawning here at night. And more. Anybody else? Are we done? Oh yeah, this whole expansive area here is not well lit up enough. I know she had a flower farm around here somewhere. Eventually. Hmm, well I know she made a flower farm, but I don't, I can't find it. For all I know, she tore it down again, I don't know. Alright, well, let's refer to the wiki. Where do blue orchids grow? Twelve seconds later. I should have known that. They're found in swamps. So I have to find a swamp. This is the map that's showing where I am at Cat's base. If I go due west from here, I think I'll find a swamp there. This is definitely a swamp. In fact, it looks like a mangrove swamp. Mangrove swamp may not be ideal for finding flowers of the type I'm looking for. You have to find it naturally, and I just don't think I can find it in the mangrove swamp. It's got to be a regular swamp. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, I guess that was the answer. Wander aimlessly until I managed to find a swamp because that's exactly what I did. I thought there might have been one north of here, but that was just a hunch as much as anything. This is a regular swamp. I should be able to find what I'm looking for here. I hope. Ah, ha, 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 there it is. And there it is. Blue Orchid. Alright, that was the one I was missing. Alright, I've demonstrated this technique before for uh, growing more flowers in Bedrock Edition. Um, but if you haven't seen it, it will blow your little mind. If I bone meal a flower in Bedrock Edition, more flowers will grow near it. That's... Everybody knows that, right? Although you can't do that in Java Edition. You can only build, bone meal the two tall flowers in Java Edition. But you see, it's very variable as to how many flowers I get. It could be as few as a couple. But, if I dig a hole one block deep, and then bone meal the flower here, I get a lot more flowers that way. I consistently get a whole lot of flowers. Azure Bluette, blindness, eight seconds. Cornflower, jump boost, six seconds. And Lily the Valley, poison, 12 seconds. Well, you know something? For all of these zombies, I have some notes describing what the different kind of zombie is, some of the things about them, some of their features. And I was wondering how self explanatory is this? You use the flower on the brown mushroom and then use the wooden bowl on it. You get suspicious too with these effects. But in case that's not obvious, maybe I should uh, actually have some kind of instructions. Alright, that looks right. Nice. It's a nice little display. I only needed one of each mushroom for that. Now the next step is figuring out what I'm going to do with the rest of the mushrooms. I don't want to cull the herd. I'd rather make a nice habitat for them to live in. That was 
just massive overkill. But I got enough sponges to do it. Down. Okay, there. There. And a little podzel in here, because it will look like uh, mushroom droppings. Helium, which given time should spread. And run the mushrooms there on a track underground all the way to there. And I just gotta build the track. Well, first dig the tunnel, then build the track. should take me all the way to the top, right? It does not. Okay, uh... Put water source there. There we go. Okay, that's what I needed to do. I'm gonna run the mushrooms through this tunnel in a minecart, and I can have the rails going along underwater. But in Bedrock Edition, at least, the rails can't be placed in a water stream. So, for example, I can place rails here, and it works fine. But if I place the rails here in flowing water, they just break. And I believe that is a Bedrock Edition bug. That's not how it's intended to work. That's not how it works in Java Edition. In Java Edition, the water does not wash away the rails. But I need to flood this whole thing one level deep because I tested this method of transporting cows in a test bed and I found that if I had water flowing from this bubble column out into this path the water flow would push the mushroom in the minecart back and so they wouldn't be able to get all the way to the bubble column so I had to put the fence gates here and obviously this has to be flooded because I'm gonna have water flowing through here anyway. So I, I'm just gonna have to flood the whole thing one level deep. Okay, I think that'll work. I think all that's left is to get the cows in place. Sorry, mushrooms. Come here, guys. Yeah, that's good. Shove them in there. Down you go. Doesn't look like they're hurt by falling in the boat. Unlike me. Pull that guy out. Cow. In you go. And down you go. Hard to keep up with it. Whoop, it went right up. Alright, let's try it to the other cow and then see if they came out okay. one got out of the way. Let's see what's up there. Uh, nope. It looks like one of them died. 
Boy, I wish I knew how it died. What the heck happened to it? That's concerning. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the... One of them died, I don't know why. Well, I'll try it one at a time and hopefully uh, I don't have that issue again. Okay, got them in the boat. Follow that one through. It went up okay. Last two? Holy cow, that took forever. No, no, there's another one over there. Oh, God. There's so many. All right, tell you what I'm going to do. This is getting to be too many, so I'm going to take this guy out and just bring this guy in by himself. The last two mushrooms I will keep up there. Now, one more thing I can do with these mushrooms. I can turn them into cows. And get some mushrooms for the effort. Now it's all done but the cleanup. I have my display over here with one of each kind of mushroom and description of how to make the suspicious stew. There's a bunch of barrels here with all the different kinds of flowers you can use on the brown mushroom and descriptions of what they do, along with the types of flowers you can use, extra bowls. Yeah, these mushrooms are really cool, except for the fact that they're not actually a very portable source of food, even if they're an infinite source of food. And the rest of the mushrooms are packed into this little red mushroom under the sea. You could say that they're safely quarantined. <laughs> Cause ain't nothing gonna get to them in there. And I'm happy to report that I only lost one mushroom in that whole process. It was the second one I transported. I don't know what happened. After that, I just did them one at a time and didn't have any more problems. But it occurs to me, speaking of quarantine, this isn't the first time that I've made a habitat for mushrooms underwater and did some scientific experiments on them. In fact, in my Bedrock vs. Java series, I did something very similar to this. And as a result of that, I said, I'm never going to build anything underwater in Java Edition ever again. <laughs> and you can find a link to that video here. And maybe understand why I said, I'll never try to build something underwater in Java Edition ever again. And next time, I'm probably not going to be building anything. I'm just going to be dying a whole lot. Next time, when Amon chooses Divergence SMP.